So there's essentially nothing new in this uh, chapter, but we're just gonna apply what we learned about maximum likelihood estimation, calculating the variance of the maximum likelihood estimator, things like that. We're gonna apply that to some of the discrete distributions that we encountered throughout the course, right? So this is chapter 14 from the book. You can find that on Toledo. And like I said, we're gonna do a lot of examples. So, so let's dive into this uh, first example that you see over here, which concerns hospital liability policies with the number of claims observed over a 10 year period. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at one policy. We're gonna follow this policy over 10 years from 1985 till 1994. And we're gonna list the number of claims reported per year on this policy. That was the setting, yeah, sorry for the confusion, right? So we can see that in a particular year, 1985, for example, our policy listed or filed uh, six claims and so on and so forth, right? So we have a single policy, but we follow the policy over a period of 10 years and we're gonna look at the yearly number of claims reported. And what we wanna do is um, we can write this, this table with information. We can write it also in a different way. So here we're gonna see for the different uh, frequencies observed going from zero up to above seven or seven or more. We can list how many years that we observe with that particular number of claims being reported. Yeah, so for example, there was one year during this 10 year period during which uh, we reported zero claims on this particular policy. There were two years during which we reported one claim and so on and so forth. So if I go back to the previous sheet, that's the kind of information we can get from this table and which we can rewrite into the format on, on the next sheet. So you see there's only one year, the year 1988 in this case, where we have zero claims reported. There are two years, the year 90 and the year 93, during which we reported one claim on our policy and so on and so forth. Yeah. So this table is another way of summarizing this same information. So now we have the frequencies listed on the left-hand side, and we have the number of observations in our data set, the number of times that this particular frequency K has been observed. And we denote that here with NK, and that's a, that's a notation we're typically gonna use with these frequency models. So what we wanna do now is we wanna fit a particular count distribution, for example, the Poisson, to this data set that we have available. And our data set is now structured as we have frequencies K, and we have the number of times that we observe that particular frequency in our data set, and that is the NK, right? So if you wanna calculate the average number of claims which are uh, reported on this policy per year, right? Then we need to take the average in the following way. So we can take the sum over all values of K, the frequencies that we consider. We do K times NK, and we divide by the total number of observations that we have in our data set. And this total number of observations, that's what you see here in, in the last bullet, this total number of observations that should be equal to the sum over all K of the NKs, right? Because the NK gives me how often did I register outcome K in my data set? So if I sum these NKs over all the possible outcomes K that I'm willing to consider, then I get the total number of observations in my data set, right? And you can see that of course on the previous sheet, if you would take the sum of the observations on the right-hand side, then you would get the total number of observations in my data set which is in this case equal to 10 because I'm following a single policy over a 10 year period. And I'm interested in the yearly number of claims reported on this particular policy, right? So the sum of the NKs here is equal to N is equal to 10 in, in our particular uh, example. The total number of claims reported, well, to get that, I need to take the sum 
of the element wise product of the k values with the nk, right? Because that would give me uh, the total number of claims reported on this contract. And I could also get that by summing the observations that I have here on the right hand side, that would give me the total number of claims reported over this uh, data set. So these are two different ways to look at it. This would give me the average number of claims. This would give me the total number of observations. So what we can do now is we can write down the likelihood for a count distribution that we want to fit on this particular data set. So if you look at the likelihood in very general terms, what we're going to do is we're going to take the product over all values k, which are the possible outcomes and the possible um, number of claims registered in this case during a specific year of the policy. Of the policy. So we're going to take the product over all k and we're going to do pk to the power nk. Because what we're doing then, the pk, that's the probability that n is equal to k, where n is the number of claims filed on my policy in a particular year. So the probability that n is equal to k, and I need to take that to the power nk. Because if I observe the particular outcome k multiple times, then each of those observations will give the same contribution to the likelihood namely the probability that n is equal to k, where n in this case, once again, is the number of claims filed during one particular year on my, uh, on my uh, liability uh, policy. I need to take that to the power nk. That's the number of times that I observe this particular outcome. So the essential idea here is that you put the likelihood together by assuming independence across the uh, observations in, in your sample. And that for each observation, uh, you're going to say what was under the assumed probability function, under the assumed frequency distribution, what was the probability, what was the likelihood to observe that particular outcome, right? And so in essentially, that's what we want to do here for all these, um, for all these outcomes that we observed uh, over here. So if you switch then to the log likelihood, you're of course returning to a sum over k of nk times the logarithm of pk. And if you are then, for example, willing to assume a Poisson distribution, you're going to replace the very general pk, which is the probability that n is equal to k, you're going to replace that with the Poisson likelihood, so that you get there a likelihood which becomes a function of the unknown lambda function of the unknown lambda. And what we can do then is we can take uh, the derivative of this likelihood, of this log likelihood with respect to lambda, put it equal to zero and solve for the unknown lambda. So that's what we're going to do on the next uh, sheet. So if we fill in the Poisson likelihood, we would get a sum over all outcomes k that we are willing to consider. Uh, or that we observed in our sample, sorry. And then we take nk, the number of times that we observe that particular outcome k, and we multiply with the logarithm of the probability function evaluated in k of the Poisson distribution, which is using here an unknown parameter lambda. And if you work out the sum, you'll see here, for example, that you get a minus lambda times the sum over k of those nk's. Well, remember nk, that's the number of times that I observed outcome k in my sample. So if I sum those nk's over all k, I get the total number of observations in my sample. So I'm going to get the n that you see over here. Also notice that this last term in my likelihood is not relying on lambda. So when I take the, or when I need to maximize the log likelihood over lambda, this last part will not play any role. And if I take the derivative with respect to lambda, this will drop from my expression. Right? So if I take the derivative with respect to lambda, I'll get an expression like this. So it's easy. It's the derivative of lambda. And here I'll need to take the derivative of the logarithm of lambda. So that becomes 1 over lambda. If I put that equal to 0 and solve for the unknown lambda, then I find my expression for the maximum likelihood estimate 
of the unknown parameter lambda in this Poisson model. And I see that this maximum likelihood estimate of lambda reduces to the sample mean. So that is here, the average number of claims reported per year on this policy, right? So that's the uh, essential steps over here. Um, maybe a very last thing. Well, of course, we now have our maximum likelihood estimate. We can write this estimate for lambda. We can also write it as an estimator. So we can also write it as a random variable. And then having this random variable, we could calculate the expected value and we could calculate the variance of my maximum likelihood estimator. Right. So this is um, perhaps it's not immediately clear how we should uh, how we should see this. So so let me switch to the iPad for just a second to clarify this. So we derived, for example, fourteen point one that the the MLE for the unknown lambda written as an estimate. So that means a particular numeric value that I can evaluate for my particular sample. So that would be lambda hat is the sum over k, so k going from zero to plus infinity, of k times nk, derived, oh, sorry, divided by the total number of observations in my sample. Yeah? So let me clarify once again this n here is the total number of observations in the sample. Here in this particular example, I would have 10 observations because I'm following my policy over 10 years, 10 complete years, right? So here that would be 10. And what we get over here is the total number of claims reported. in the sample, right? So here that means if you sum the claims over the 10 year period, and then you get this total number of claims that we would have to consider here. Here, total number of claims over the 10 year period. Yeah, I'm stressing that because it's a little bit of a funny example, I would say. But so you really have to keep in mind what we mean here with uh, the total number of claims. Now, this is how, how I would write down this, this estimate for lambda using the table format that we, that we started with, right? So we had a table with the outcomes k and then with the n case, which is the number of times we observed that particular outcome k over this 10 year period that we were considering. But in general, you would uh, write down, if you would switch to, a, um, to an expression for a maximum likelihood estimator, so for a random variable, then you would approach it, uh, or at least I would approach this in a little bit of a different way. So switching to to uh, an expression as a random variable. So then we talk about an estimator and not just an estimate, but an estimator, so a random variable. Then I would work with the following notation. And I would say, let n1 up to n10 be the random variable expressing the number of claims reported in each year of a 10 year period. Right? For me, that would be there, there are probably other ways. Um, to, to frame it, but, but for me, this would be the most natural way to write it down. Because then you would say that my lambda 
which now becomes a capital because I want to approach the lambda as a random variable, as an estimator. So what I would need then is the sum over i, the sum over these number of observations in my sample of the ni. And that would be the same again as getting the total number of claims reported across my sample in this particular example. And I would divide it by n, the total number of observations in my sample with n equal to 10, of course. So in that case, I could easily see that the expected value of capital lambda of my estimator would be n times the expected value of a single n divided by n. And if I'm willing to assume that those n i's follow the same distribution of s, a common n, which is a Poisson with parameter lambda, then I'll retrieve here the small lambda, right? So that means that the expected value of my maximum likelihood estimator for lambda is the unknown lambda itself. And immediately I could also say something about the variance of lambda. And the variance of lambda here would be n times the variance of a single n divided by n squared. So that would be the variance of a single n divided by n. So that would be lambda divided by n. So here you quickly get your expected value of the maximum likelihood estimator as well as your variance, right? Uh, there are other ways, of course, huh, to, to, to get this variance. You could also go by looking at the inverse of the Fisher information matrix. Huh? So in that case, you would have to go to minus the second order derivatives of the uh, log likelihood, take the expected value, take the inverse of that expression, and then you can see that you obtain exactly the same expression as this lambda divided by n over here, right? Uh, but here there is no need uh, to go to this Fisher information matrix because we can immediately see what the variance is of our maximum likelihood estimate, all right? So that's a little bit uh, the different ingredients in, in this example. It may be, like I said, it may be a bit of a counterintuitive example because we're just looking at a single policy and we're following this policy across 10 years, 10 full years. And we're registering the number of claims reported on this policy during each of those, uh, during each of those years, right? And that's, uh, for that, I introduced this notation with the NIs. And now we can see that, um, the maximum likelihood estimator for the lambda in our Poisson model, that it can be written as the sample mean. So that means the average number of claims reported uh, in a single year under this, uh, under this contract. 